Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about paradigms. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, should new programmers be made away of different programming paradigms early in the start of their career? Yes and no. Um, so it's this is a very tricky thing because we kind of have to talk a little bit about what we mean by paradigms because it's such a f I mean there is certainly a very distinct definition somewhere that very bureaucratically inclined people have a very good understanding of I'm just not one of those people so when we talk about paradigms we can talk about the classic ones object oriented programming functional programming aspect oriented programming yeah, I mean etc etc there are many ways to define a paradigm and a way of working. But the thing that I want to touch on is also to kind of include the concept of design patterns and the sort of practices that you might follow. So the thing that I argue to most software developers that I see lacking in a lot of their knowledge is the core, which is to know, usually now, object-oriented programming. That is the bread and butter, gold standard paradigm to know. The reason why that is the case is because it is the most common paradigm of all the ways that you can do programming to date, uh, at least for right now. And that doesn't necessarily mean that there's, there's no value in learning all the other stuff, but w what I try to tell people is that you have to give yourself time to mature. And what a lot of people will do, which I think is if you do it for the right reason, it's a good thing. If you do it for the wrong reason, it's not such a good thing. If you try to become a master programmer or master software developer too quickly, what's going to happen is that you're going to spread yourself too thin and you're going to sort of learn a lot of stuff, but you're not going to be very good at anything. So if you're trying to force yourself to learn all these different paradigms and patterns of working and so forth, I urge you not to do that, but to rather focus on being able to write software effectively. Focus on producing results before you get too far into the idea that you're going to learn all the theory and all the things, right? Because the thing that is going to make you a good software developer is tinkering. It is to do things, to build things, because the theory and the knowledge and so forth, it, some of it is actually going to come from the fact that you are tinkering. And it's a, it should be, in the beginning of things, it should be 50-50. You should like, basically, as soon as you learn a new concept, you should start tinkering with it, like play around with it, hack around with some code or scripts or whatever, right? And then try it out so you can kind of get that feel like learning by doing type of approach, I think is a, one of my favorite ones, and I think it's the best one. Uh, but not focus so much on what I call more advanced theoretical concepts within paradigms and things like that. An example would be functional programming. Why do I call it a more advanced concept? Well, it's very simple, because it is not the norm. Functional programming is something that, for most intents and purposes, is pointless to the average software developer. Not because it's bad, but it's simply not the mainstream thing. And even if you want to learn it, you're going to, and you do learn it, you're very unlikely to ever actually need a lot of the knowledge that you're going to get yourself through. And so you have to ask yourself, if you don't have an interest, or like if you don't, I mean, if you do it for passion sake, passion and stuff like that, that's a whole different thing, right? But why would you spend your time doing something that most people will not care if you know? because most people don't care. Like most companies, they will not give a shit about whether or not you know functional programming or not, unless you're like specifically looking for a company that uses languages that are very functional-ish. Like th that would be the exception, right? But there's no point in you learning that paradigm. It's gonna be useful to you, but why start with it? Your first real challenge as a software developer is not to learn functional programming. Your first challenge is to get your first job and actually become an actual software developer. And that's the thing that I urge people to do. If you have a genuine interest, 
dabble with it, learn it, and so forth. But don't take your, you know, don't don't lose track of the, don't take your eye off the ball. The ball is to become a professional grade software developer. And if that is what your end goal actually is, focus on that goal. The paradigms that matter are the ones that are mainstream. The concepts that matter are the ones that are actually being used within the industry. All the other stuff is useful. All the other stuff is going to teach you a lot of stuff and it's always moving and so forth. But there are some patterns and some paradigms that are so mainstream that it's not nice to have to know them. It's a damn requirement. And object-oriented programming, if for many intents and purposes, is a requirement. It is uh, it's it's very rare that you will find a place of work where you're not going to use it or some flavor of it at the very least so so that's why i argue that that is a very good focus area for you another area that is sort of the same thing as paradigms is to know the culture within the language that you are using why is that why does that matter well it's actually very simple because if you want to be say a JavaScript developer or a Java developer or a C Sharp developer or a Python developer, it doesn't really matter what type of developer you want to be. You have to understand that you're going to work most of the time with other, de other developers and each community has different paradigms and practices and ways of thinking about how to structure code. And if you don't know how to do that, it's sort of like you're playing a sport without knowing exactly how the game is played. So, and, and an example would be like if you play football or something like that. Football is a game that, I mean, even children can play football, right? But there are, d depending on how you're, at what level you're going to play, there are more and more nuanced rules and it gets more and more complicated. There are all these subtle things that you need to know in order to play effectively as part of, as part of a team, if you're not just doing it at like a, the most basic level, right? And that's exactly how programming works as well. There are certain practices within different communities that you need to focus on, that you need to learn. And that's why I tell people, don't try to learn everything at the same time, because you don't have time, or often you're not going to have the time, to really learn how one community or one specific stack uh, works in the beginning you you you, you ha or rather you have to focus on trying to get to that point because when you get to an interview when you start working what's important is not that you sort of know a bunch of stuff what's important is that you can fit into the environment that you find yourself and that comes down to one part as i was saying to know how to like write code and like follow the like the paradigms that uh, I was talking about, but it also comes down to that you can write software in a fashion that feels familiar and acceptable to the people on the inside. And it does not matter if you are smarter than the people on the inside, because when it comes to being a software developer, you have to understand that even if you are completely convinced that reactive programming, aspect-oriented programming, or functional programming, doesn't matter what it is, is superior to whatever is happening within the company, that does not matter because the people who are paying you your salary and the people who will say yes or no when you are in the interview are the people who are there. They're already on the inside and if you want to be in that club you're gonna to have to be able to mimic or like to play by the rules that they have set and that is why I tell people focus on the mainstream stuff first and primarily focus on that until you are stable, until you know how their way of doing things works. When you know how their way is, how that works, so you can do the same thing, so you can fit in, then go on on like a spiritual journey and learn everything about uh, stored procedures and, and like property-based testing and all that other good stuff. I promise you, it's going to be a lot of fun, but to, try to wait a little bit until you're old and mature and like in, in your college years, if that makes sense. So what I want you to take away from this is that, no, I don't think that it, just in general, paradigms are all that important or design patterns are all that important in the early stages of a software developer's career. The first step should always be to learn how to just produce results, regardless of what paradigm you're using. Because at the end of the day, guys, most paradigms are just, they have evolved from the fact that you started out writing very simple programs completely without any of this stuff 
and then programs became bigger and they became bigger and bigger and bigger until you started figuring out that there's patterns in how you write code that sort of work and that's where the paradigms come from. You create these mental tools, if that makes sense, in order to write better software and that is the key. Better software, or in, depending on how you define better, it's sometimes just different software. And the thing that go, gets lost in translation is that people think that, okay, so writing better software is the important stuff. No. Writing software that works is the important stuff, and you can write software that works in just in like a declarative style, a procedural style, object-oriented programming, functional programming. It doesn't matter which style you're with; they all will work. They will all produce a working program. And for a beginner, it's more important to focus on being able to do that than to learn all the theoretical tools that they could use. So focus on the mainstream stuff first until you feel comfortable working with that stuff and then try to focus on fitting into whatever company or community you pick when you start programming and I promise you one if you give it a bit of time you're gonna learn that stuff it's gonna feel like yeah I sort of know this is kinda boring but this stuff over here with all the aspect oriented stuff or the functional stuff over here that's actually pretty interesting that time is gonna come but don't try to force it just because you want to become a master immediately because you have to let it take some time. Have a great day.